Hey, everybody. We're back again with another episode of Big Talk About Small Business. My partner is not chiming no, in. No, I wanted you to does. own it this episode. Come on. Okay. Big, big talk, talk about, about small business. business. Sorry, I put you on the spot. <laughs> you, really, you really made that uncomfortable. I know. In any case, um, it's it's Eric Howerton and and myself, and also my friend Taryn Gates is here with us in the studio. How are you doing this morning, Taryn? Pretty good. It's been a good morning. Has it? Mm-hmm. Started what with a, a piece of pie over at the pie house. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's a good way to start. Right. I like that. I started out at McDonald's. Yeah, you did. And I went inside. It, and it's always interesting when you sit inside McDonald's, yeah. the, the cast of characters that's mm-hmm. in there. There's usually like some old people, you know, and they're yeah. they're taking care of each other. And that's kind of cute. And then there's like the homeless people who are like taking showers in the bathroom <laughs> sink. I had some of that today, too. It's a good I, way to start the morning, I, bro. I mean, I know this makes me sound terrible. And I know there are a lot of people out there suffering. But this homeless couple looked absolutely normal. They were in their late 20s. Each one had a cell phone. I studied them. Mm. They had a new iPad in the box that they were setting up while they sat at the table. And the best um, accessory they had was a fake baby wrapped up in a baby blanket, no. which they then shoved into a giant black trash bag oh. along with the rest of their stuff. <laughs> but I think that was probably a sympathy-getting tool, you know, um, I, I mean, you know, you've seen it. I mean, I, I, it, it's a fact that here the homeless people, at least in Fayetteville, are actually working shifts and they're organized and there are people that are out there pimping them out. Okay. <laughs> Back on this conversation. Collecting, collecting the money. Um, there was a whole conversation that was overheard recently at a restaurant where the one person was being trained. Huh. about how to be, you know, um, the um, beg for money. Policy and procedure meeting. Yeah, it's true. It's huh. like we gather you all up. Now at 4 o'clock we have a shift change. We got coffee break from 1 to one fifteen. Anyway, it's impressive. like working. Yeah. It's working. It is. But but anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. I, I'm sorry to sidetrack us. <laughs> it's okay. We're here to talk about Taryn and Taryn's new business, Um Tell us a little bit about yourself, Taryn. Um, Taryn has a business called the Gates Clinic. Uh, so, yeah, that's the abbreviated because the long version is a little wordy. Give us the long version. <laughs> so it's Gates Prosthetic and Mobility Clinic. Gates Prosthetic and Mobility Clinic. And I know she's got a lot of experience in dealing with prosthetics and prosthetic patients. Mm-hmm. But tell us um, a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up? Sure. So I grew up in Batesville, Arkansas. Okay. Uh, it's a pretty small town. Um, very much small town culture. And from there, I went to U of A and got my undergraduate degree. Um, that was in kinesiology and a math minor. Um, and then I went on to a master's program at UT um, Southwestern in Dallas uh, for prosthetics and orthotics. And what got you into prosthetics? Um, well, so I thought I wanted to do physical therapy and I worked mm-hmm. in a clinic um, through the summer in high school and uh, they had a patient there that was an amputee. And so I started looking into that and shadowing in, in those clinics um, and really just fell in love with the balance of working for people and working with your hands um, and that everything is ev- evolving and changing um, all the time. So it stays um, very unrepetitive and it's always adapting and you're always having to learn new things and, and keep up with the new technology. I always tell people that, that like, I've said this to several of my kids and I haven't listened. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up. And I'm like, look into physical therapy. Mm. It seems so gratifying to me. Yeah. And I've been through it multiple times for one thing or another. You know, I got a bad knee from kickstart and old Norton motorcycles and stuff <laughs> like that. And it's, and you know, and I had destroyed my left hand here in a motorcycle accident. Mm. But it's always fun when you go there. Mm. It's always sort of a, of a community it, as a yeah. patient. All the therapists are they're nice. Yeah. They become you become friends with them. That's true. And then sometimes you'll you'll be on the same cycle with other patients. There's like a little community. Everybody's mm-hmm. talking and mm-hmm. it seems like it's such a would be so rewarding because mm-hmm. it is so helpful. Yeah. Yeah. You know? 
definitely is. You don't know how helpful it is until you until you've been through it. Until you've been <laughs> through it, because I had no idea what they were about. But then, yeah, I mean, it got me through some shoulder pains that were pretty rowdy and some hip pains too. I had a shoulder thing where my arm just was um, like numb mm-hmm. and and you know where you get that weird feeling yep. in it. But it turned out to be a pinched neck uh, nerve. Yep. And then, you know, they put you in neck traction and all. Mm-hmm. But it is a very rewarding field and you help a lot of people. So I can see why somebody would like that. Now, I don't know about the math major. How did that work in with that? <laughs> well, so I that started help in engineering. Um, and so I uh-huh. grew, you know, went through all of the math courses and it was like, well, I can take one more and have a minor. So I might as well. I see. Um, wow, that's and cool. it was ironically a GPA boost because those were all my A's and college <laughs> dumb girl I, I mean just yeah, yeah. yeah like just yeah. a real slacker you'll find how much of a nerd I'm sure. <laughs> so anyway so you got your master's degree then you were you worked while you were in school you said at a at a pt clinic yes that was in in high school okay so and in batesville yes. okay mm-hmm. and then what happened um, so I'm, from there, I did my residency um, in our field. It's a uh, master's degree and then at least two years of residency. Okay. Uh, and then you take board exams. So I went back to Arkansas mm-hmm. um, and practiced in Mountain Home um, and finished my residency, took my board exams, and as we say, became a real person in the field. <laughs> Is that it? Mm-hmm. Mountain Home, wow. That's where I used to go when I was a kid. I uh, loved it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's gorgeous yeah. up there. Mm-hmm. It is. There were two bars in town. That's mm-hmm. all I remember. Mm-hmm. The Red Fox was at the Holiday Inn, and then there was something else on the other end of town. <laughs> and anyway, we used to go there as kids. <laughs> Most people go there for like the lakes and rivers. Right. Yeah, the Lake North. But you were there for the bars. The no, my, my, my friend was so good. <laughs> my, friend, my friend's brother-in-law had a cabin on Lake Norfolk. Mm-hmm. That's why we went there. But it gets really boring after a couple nights of playing cards and, yeah. you know, drinking beer. So we'd inevitably so you just move to the bar. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, back. Uh, so so then so you went through the two year residency and then how did you end up here? So, um, you know, I've had some family move. And so I ended up splitting my time and covering both clinics and Mount Home and Rogers. Um, I see. And, you know, I, that was fairly unsustainable. Um, mm-hmm. I did that for a year to a year and a half um, with kids and a family. Oh, wow. yeah. So, you know, you were commuting and get up at five, drive two hours, wow. see a full day of patients. Um, sure. We had two houses, so we were splitting our time. Mm-hmm. Um, so you never know where any of your stuff is. <laughs> right. And um, you get home at nine o'clock, you eat some microwave food and you go to bed and you did it again. Wow. Um, so we did that for, uh, like I said, a year to a year and a half. And mm-hmm. I, I eventually said, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm-hmm. So I came over here full time uh, okay. and, you know, it, in healthcare and in what we do, um, it's really lifelong relationships with your patients. And so sure. part of that was really hard on me uh-huh. um, because these Given patients, those. yeah, there were people that I'd seen for mm. four years at this point. Right. Um, you know, and I remember like actually crying on mm. my last day oh. there. Um, because it was saying goodbye to these people sure. and not knowing whether I'd see them again yeah. um, mm-hmm. and hoping that the hands that I was leaving them in were going to keep them as active and, and healthy and, and mobile as I was trying to do. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. So I came over here and mm-hmm. built the same thing here. Um, you know, and I, I feel that way about everywhere I've been and gone and the patients that I've seen. Um, so now I have my, my patient family here. Um, and yeah, I've been practicing in this area for about four years now. Okay. Um, and yeah, I have to stop and think about how long I've been here and, and really how many relationships I've developed in the area too. Did you have your own clinic in Mountain Home? No. Um, so that was when I was working with a um, family owned business there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a large reason why I took that residency and joined that practice um, was that it was a, a family owned business. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a really good interview with um, the CEO at the time and, and really liked just the freedom of innovation that they offered. Um, you know, it wasn't about, you know, how much can you turn out and how fast can yeah. you do it? It was about caring, caring. Mm-hmm. And then when you moved here, did, is that when you opened up your own clinic? No. So that was again with the same company. Okay. Oh, okay. So we actually did expanded different... okay. um, and opened a clinic in this area. Um, and, and in part to create an opportunity for me to move to the area sure. that my family was in. Um, and so, yeah, that was 
part of the reason, part of the market. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it was growing and there wasn't enough suppliers in the area, so yeah. we saw a good opportunity come. So what exactly do you do for your patients? I mean, do you provide them with the prosthetic? Sure. Yeah, it's um, a little confusing about how all that works. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, and then I assume you give them a lot of therapy to be able to use it effectively, right? So what we do um, is we fit and customize the prosthesis um, to the individual. Okay. So, you know, the, the components as far as like the knee and the feet and those kind of things are made and manufactured um, by facilities. They're tested and they go through cyclic testing. Um, we don't make those parts, but everything that goes... Do you design them? Do you give them we, specs on what you want? Or? No, it's more about matching the person to what's out there. You I know, see. It's not everybody gets a Ford, right? That may not work for everybody. Somebody right. with a Corvette. Okay. Um, but it's it's about assessing their weaknesses, their strengths, their goals, um, their surroundings and environment and what matches. Uh -huh. um, and then the more important part is the, is the patient interfacing part. Okay. So, so it's more like custom modifications to... That part is completely custom from scratch. Um, something mm -hmm. that I'm doing that's a little differently is I'm keeping that part in-house and making it myself. Um, a lot of that is being sent out and central fabricated, um, and it's a little more mass produced. So okay. you're making your own prosthesis, mm -hmm. or what would I call that, prostheses? Yes, that'd be plural. <laughs> I want to make sure I do that right. Well done, bro. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was the editor of my high school paper. Yeah, you were. You're one of the best writers I've ever met in my life. Yeah, thanks. I'm announcing that. I love you now. But um, so, eh, thanks, buddy. For real. <laughs> um, so, so you're making them in house now. Yes. So, what kinds of equipment do you need to do that? Um, so, the final product is made of resin and carbon, um, and some other materials. But uh, how that works is you have um, a positive model. You lay your materials over it. You have a, a vacuum pump. Yeah. Um, and actually, the one I'm using is from a dental office. <laughs> And so it runs vacuum, pulls all the materials in, and then mm -hmm. you run resin through it for a wet lamination. Um, and then as wow. the resin sets up, then you take that off, you grind it out, and shape it. You yeah. do this yourself? I do. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> cool. What are the engineering uh, aspirations you have back yeah. today are coming in handy with that? It is, yeah. So yeah. It, I think everybody's always surprised when I tell them that I use power tools every day. <laughs> uh huh. That's cool. Yeah. That is. Uh, you know, your husband and I went to that carbon fiber mm -hmm. bike manufacturing company. Yeah, um, that's slick. I wish here. it was that, that uh, streamlined, but because everything is mm -hmm. so individual and one off, mm -hmm. it's very hands on, very technical. Cool. So, like, what does a typical carbon fiber leg sell for? There's a huge variation, um, and it just depends on what the components are. Um, you know, if a very basic, like, transfer leg for a below-the-knee amputee, mm -hmm. maybe $7,000. Um, Holy cow. Right, and that's what you hear. And, that's you know, you hear money. about how expensive these things are, but a lot of sure. people don't understand that that is all-inclusive. Right. Um, so we don't get paid for time. Um, we don't mm. get paid for you know any care after the fact. And I see. So it's all about, you know, all of our cost is in the delivered product. Got it. So that's the eval, that's the casting, that's all the adjustments and follow-ups after mm -hmm. any maintenance. Um, so it's, it's a little more than what's presented on paper. Sure. sure. That makes a lot of sense. It's actually kind of comforts a lot right there. Because, yeah, they know what it is. It's a, yeah. Because yeah. I'm sure you have some, some, pre-evaluations, right? Yeah. Consultations. Oh, yeah. Then, of course, then you do the fitting. And I mean, there's a lot of work in that. Yeah. And then you're adjusting afterwards. Mm -hmm. So there's no coaching, you know, no co-pays for visits or anything like that. Oh, wow. It's just all yeah. Yeah. Does the insurance typically pay for these legs? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does. Okay. So why are most of these, I mean, is it mainly legs or are there other prostheses that you provide? Uh, sure. Yeah. Upper yeah. extremity, lower extremity. We do orthotics too. I don't talk as much about those. Okay. Um, so bracing as well. Um, uh -huh. Do pediatric and adult. Um, oh, wow. Like full service. Yes. Yeah. So what, why would, why do most of these amputees need limbs? What is that driven by, um, Diabetes, or what is the primary driver? Accidents? Mm -hmm. and now, diabetes is the leading cause um, in mm -hmm. the U.S. Um, there's uh -huh. you know, In this area, I see a lot of um, accidents as well, and there are a lot of different reasons. There's some congenital reasons uh, that contribute to um, cancer. Mm -hmm. 
motor vehicle accidents we see quite a bit of, which I think we'll actually start seeing more of in, in this area. Um, it's because of the population growth? Yes. And, you know, the infrastructure around the roads um, is it's going to be a challenge. Um, and, you know, we see wrecks cycling. all day, every day cycling. Really? Mm-hmm. A lot of people get hurt on bicycles. People yes. don't realize it. Yeah. Is that is that true? Mm-hmm. Is Mark right? And those, uh, most of the time, those are um, more neurological injuries. They may have head lasting. injuries, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Lasting effects. Is that mainly from like road biking or is it mountain biking too? All of All of it. <laughs> Now you have, I, I know that's like one of your specialties that you're mm-hmm. providing over there, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's, and that comes from. How do you from, promote that? It's, it's what, typical. Wait, what, right? what specialty are you talking about? Cycling related. Oh, really? Injuries. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And prosthetics. And prosthetics. And yeah. Activity specific prosthetics. Um, so getting people back into the activities yeah. that they want to do. And um, that's something that insurance is just starting to recognize um, as a need as well. Um, 50% of amputees um, actually die five years after their first amputation. Wow. And that's generally from comorbidities, right? And so they're what not. Is that, the, what does that word mean? Oh, um, so additional diseases and disorders that they're dealing with. So, you know, they're not the most healthy individual to start with. They have an amputation. Now they're in a wheelchair. And now they're they immobile. Decline. Sure. Quickly. And I'm sure there's a lot of mental yes. fact, factors of that too, sure. right? Mm hmm. Being depressed and then, yeah. yeah. So, you know, wow. it's close to my heart to get these people up and active again yeah. um, so uh-huh. that they can work on their health. Because um, for a lot of people, it's kind of the wake up call. That sure. I have to do something different. Yeah, I was noticing that on your website when I was reading. I mean, just kind of your, which I love the mission. I, I love mission based stuff. <laughs> these guys really have a, val- a, a, a real mission. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not just like trying to get somebody to buy your crutch or something. <laughs> right, exactly. Or, or buy a prosthetic, right? <laughs> right. Buy from us, it means more about caring and mm-hmm. yeah. getting them back into a, I mean, really a positive mentality lifestyle in life. Yeah. 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 I mean, mm-hmm. I could imagine, like, I mean, I could imagine that a lot of these folks are, I mean, it's like, it's like a hit, and hit with a ton of bricks mm-hmm. and they the no impact. what their next day looks like. Yeah, yeah. And now your whole life's changed. Mm-hmm. You lose, yeah. you might lose some hope. Right, and mm-hmm. but you guys are really caring for self esteem. Hell yeah, man! Yeah. Being worried about yeah, yeah that's your a self so, image is just completely oh, rocked. So that's sure. that's mm-hmm. what I hear a lot of times is questions about like, isn't it really depressing work? And it's it's not at all. Um, mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. because we're catching people on the other side. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's really a lot of fun to kind of guide them through the process and say you're going to be able to get back to what you wanted to do, you know, and what you're doing prior. And so we're really yeah able to kind of give them a little hope. Yeah. 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 I just, I'm okay. sorry. No, go ahead, Mark. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to ask, you see a big difference in like male and female patients about their mental state related to this? No. Um, I think they struggle as there is some gender differences, uh, mm-hmm. but I think there's equal struggles on both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like men in particular really worry about their ability to take care of the house, Mm -hmm. go back to work, um, you know, provide an income for the family, Mm -hmm. um, which I think is is true in a lot of scenarios. Um, And and women worry about, you know, keeping up with the family and keeping up with the kids. And and a lot of them are working too. So, I mean, it's it's the same thing, but some of Mm -hmm. the just cultural dynamics, um, there's some really deeply ingrained concerns for both sides. Wow. Um, and then self-image as well, you know, and, and sure, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people about, you know, is my husband or is my wife still going to love me? Yeah. You know, yeah. Well. Oh yeah. I'm sure. I believe it. Yeah. Well, that's pretty big. I mean, that's pretty deep and a big deal, right? I mean, <laughs> that like, is. Yeah. You end I'm, up being a little bit uh, of a counselor and a marriage counselor while you're doing all this too. <laughs> but what I like about it though, is like you're attaching your passion behind mm-hmm. that and like. I mean, I could imagine, I mean, I could only imagine going through an event that would create that, but then being able to find a clinic like yours that where you're, you as the entrepreneur leader of that business, that you actually really genuinely care about that. And that's your mission. Yeah. I mean, being able to get coached through that, I mean, that would be so relieving. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was actually reading on the side about it and I just kind of put myself in, in, in that position for a second and I actually legitimately had like an emotional relief mm-hmm. in a way that if something like that happened that there there's is, somebody there's, out there that yeah could, yeah help you yeah yeah we end up doing a lot outside of kind of our spectrum 
mm. um, of just taking on coordinating care too. Um, because a lot of times that people go home and they don't realize, you know, I'm going to have to have my house modified and I mm. now need to have my car modified. And they're, they're sure. not thinking that far ahead. Um, so just making yeah. sure that people are making connections in the right areas, getting referred to the right places. Yeah, it's like you had this testimony on your site from a, from a guy that said, you know, this is my first year mm-hmm. involved in this. And mm-hmm. he was just kind of talking about, like, I had no idea what to expect. But going in on the pre-eval, like mm-hmm. before he had the amputation, like he gave him that that hope and that mm-hmm. understanding that hey, this is going to, I mean, this isn't going to destroy everything like you're expecting it to. Mm-hmm. And that's something that's that a we... noble endeavor. Totally is, man. I love it. We we believe really strongly in preoperative counseling, yeah. Um, because there's not a lot of resources out there. Um, typically, you know, your surgeon's extremely busy. They're in and out of the room. Sure, they don't answer right. A lot of questions. Yeah, um, surgeons aren't known for right. bedside <laughs> manner, right? <laughs> right? Spending time with you, yeah. yeah. And well, and a lot of them don't know. They do a procedure. Know, too much of the process that happens after that. Sure. So well, they got they got something to focus on, right? They have mm-hmm. they have yeah. a lot of responsibility in just that. Oh, that yeah. box. And they, I could never they, do honestly, it. Honestly, I've talked to a lot of them. They feel like it's a failure, you know, when they get to that point of they're going to have to have uh-huh. an amputation. Um, mm, so it's a hard decision for them, and they don't yeah. no, don't always want to own it. Um, yeah. So we try to kind of take that space and make sure people are taken care of and know where to go. Because um, so there there have been a lot of people to go home and sit for six months and not know who to call. And like we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. they deconditioned during that time. Um, so we we take that really seriously. Um, we have a support group as well, so we try to get people oh, that's uh, good. in front of peer advocates so that people that have actually been through this personally. Right. So I can tell you from a clinician what's going to happen. Yeah, but it helps. Walk sure. Into the room that's actually missing a limb, and they you're not alone. Walk. In. Yeah, yeah, and that's you can do it. Difference. I'm sure. So let's go back to the business aspect, though. <laughs> How did you decide to start your own business? Sure. Um, so both of my parents were entrepreneurs. Um, my dad is an attorney. My mom's an accountant. Okay. Um, I think back, you know, the generation before that, my grandpa was a dentist that had his own practice and a, a family newspaper. Mm-hmm. Um, my other grandparents had a Western Auto. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, I grew up watching everybody work really hard, and I was like, this doesn't stop. This is, you know, it's not eight to five. I never want to own my own business. I'm just going to work for somewhere that I, you know, share a mission with. And, and that's what I'm going to do. Right. Um, but, you know, that's it's when you make demands, they tend to come back in your face. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I am a very passionate and outspoken person. Um, so when things start changing and I don't agree with the way that care is provided, um, I just seem to continue to hit a roadblock in not being able to provide care the way I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really was, felt like I was forced to make the decision. Um, and, you know, on top of that, not only patient care, but the way that people in the business, the employees were taken care of as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, was that really because bad. your uh, clinics were part, were acquired by private equity and private equity is just purely financially driven? Yes. I mean, that was, uh-huh. that they was didn't big... share the mission necessarily. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the culture went from a family owned <coughs> business. You know, it was, it was very much about the people that were in it, um, to mm-hmm. an, a corporation and it was, then became, you know, dollar amount and profit mm-hmm. margins, and we need people in and out of here in 45 minutes. Turning turning the tables. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, table. It's like a restaurant. Yeah. Exactly. Like, get them in and get them yeah. out. Get in and get out. Because, again, we don't get mm-hmm. paid on time. So the right. faster you can get somebody in and out and delivered a prosthesis, the more money you make. Yeah. So when did you decide you wanted to do your own thing? Um, and how long was the gestation period? Sure. So this has probably been three years in the works. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of it stemmed from burnout. And, you know, we all went through COVID and there was a huge shift in workplace culture at that point. Um, and I was looking at changing degrees and fields and, and doing something different and getting out of healthcare, um, which there's been a huge shift of people out of O&P, um, which is orthotics and prosthetics, um, because of the same reasons. And, you know, we see we don't have enough people replacing um, practitioners now. So there's a huge shortage. There's an increase in, in amputation rate. Um, and then people leaving the field on top of that. I think yeah, well, like 25% of the graduating classes leave. 
They don't even stay. Leave what? Prosthetics and orthotics. They, they well, they get a degree and they don't even practice what they yeah. study. So, I mean, I was looking at wow. that. I was, you know, and, and so I, I was looking at ads for working at Mercedes and I'm like, really? I could do that. I mean, it's, you know. Slinging cars? So, sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted to be a car slinger. I've always thought that women should be more selling cars. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, because I think other women would respond to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not so threatening. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it would yeah. be refreshing to have it an intelligent very... person. Yeah, I don't not, think I've ever seen, you know, gone to a car lot and not... <laughs> Not seeing a bunch of guys out there. Yeah. And you pull up and you're like, oh, great. Which one's going to be the first one? Yeah, they're like yeah. coming out in the oh, last edge, yeah. man. It's just like, ooh, like which, yeah. The gym. I mean, yeah. Which, which one right? was last munchies mouth? So, <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, so I was looking at, at doing that. I was mm-hmm. just trying to figure out, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to do this the rest of my life. And I've got 30 more years of working minimum. But what's the, you don't want to do what? Like, what's the this on that? Because you talked about the burnout mm-hmm. and the, folks not going into the field i mean what is the that part that this was the company arguing for the what i felt the correct way to provide care um Mm -hmm. you know you got you we fight insurance a lot as it is Mm -hmm. that i have to fight insurance and then fight the company and fight the policies and you know sell three more legs so we can have a pizza party for lunch was just i could (laughs) couldn't do it you know (laughs) <laughs> it's so, brutal, man. I mean, yeah, but it's man. real. You yeah. know, that's what happens. Yeah, I mean, decays the the purpose behind the business. Right, and yeah, I mean, we have sat here and talked about purpose and and mm-hmm. where it comes from. So I just I couldn't mentally could not do it. So three years in the making. So when did you do your business plan, or did you do a business plan? <laughs> oh, I did very uh, very many different versions. Uh, okay. This actually started as an adaptive gym. Um, so I, I wanted to open a facility that was geared around exercise and mm-hmm. tailored to people with disability and that they could go in and use equipment safely because um, there's there's a lot of variations there that, you know, getting on a stationary bike does not look the same. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, you know, worked with U of A small business and um, technology department and set up a business plan around that. Went Who'd you the, deal with over there? Um, Mary Beth, oh, Mary and Stephanie Parsons, yeah, um, and you know, Stephanie really championed it for me. Did she? she met with me, and uh-huh, we great. we did lots of different business plans. And um, it's at some point we sat down, and she said, "Look, Taryn, you're obviously going to go do something. You mm-hmm. need to go do it." And it was yeah. kind of the get off the pot, or yeah, you know, kind of kicking you out yeah. of the nest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta have that talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Stop, you stop get an analy- right. and do an analysis forever mm-hmm. about stuff. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, we we ran a lot of numbers on the adaptive gym, and that was probably two thousand early two thousand nineteen, and then COVID hit, and I was like, maybe a gym's not a good idea, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it. it evolved into a little bit of a mix of both. Um, so, you know, right now we're doing prosthetics and orthotics, but also have adaptive training on the side. Um, mm. So, you know, doing the sport-specific prosthetics and then offering um, personalized exercise plans that are adaptive, taking into those considerations. To get people so you kind of have a micro market then. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're really focused on folks that have a need mm-hmm. for this, but they want to be active. Yes. And, and yeah, they probably don't all want to be active. Right, right, right. Like, so, like, I mean, you're not, I mean, like, th- that's interesting to me because if mm-hmm. folks that have had active lives that want to have active lives afterwards, right. finding you is like, I mean, it's fantastic. Right. Is because, again, kid? most yeah. clinics are focused on getting you in and out. Yeah, wow. Well, delivering yeah. the most expensive parts regardless of what that looks like, not necessarily taking the extra time. What's your, what's your tagline in your business to kind of identify with that market? Like, have you, do you have something that, (laughs) um, you know, I I think the closest I've come has been the, um, uniquely designed crafted for your goals. I'm just thinking like Mm -hmm. prosthetics for performance. He's a marketer. Yeah. He's a performance (laughs) prosthetics. Yeah. Eric's a mar- you should listen to him. Yeah. He's he's good. <laughs> but but I mean because like because I think that if you have an yeah. audience out there, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're gonna have that need and you're right. fitting that need. Right. But that it's a differentiator. That, yeah, it totally is. And but that attachment to that tagline could mm-hmm. make because people need to be able to like immediately understand what your business mission is. Mm-hmm. And if they can attach to that, then they're just gonna give a call. And then they're gonna know they're gonna go in there with that expectation mm-hmm. and you guys are gonna solve it. Yeah. That's, that's good advice. That's really good advice. 
Yeah, there we go. Good job, Eric. You're so welcome. Where, wh- so, Terry, where did you get the money to start this business? I assume it takes a significant amount of money. You've got to have the right kind of facility. Right. And then all the mm-hmm. equipment you need to be able to make the prosthetic, prostheses, excuse me. That's <laughs> great. Or I would say prosthetic devices, I guess. And a lot of it um, was... So how did you finance that? Yeah, a lot of it was just good fortune um, and, and timing and... You know, we moved over here again. We had we had two houses between Mountain Home and and Rogers, and right. we sold those kind of as the market was booming and made some money on that. Mm-hmm. Um, consolidated into one house, and again hit that and sold it at a really good time. Um, so we we downsized to mm-hmm. um, a house that was a quarter of the size. We pulled a lot of bills, um, and you know made a lot of decisions to say we're not going to be tied to this lifestyle, this house, we want to do something different. Um, so that's that is, entrepreneurship it is, it right there, isn't it? Sure is. is. You did it. We <laughs> did it. We've all done it. Second mortgage. Uh, yeah. And your, your husband's more. supporting you the whole way through. Yes. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about him. What's his background? Sure. So we are both prosthetist orthodist, um, which makes for interesting dinner table conversations, <laughs> right. lots of legs and, 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 um, I just keep wanting to make a joke. That's so bad about <laughs> I'd give an arm and a leg to be in that business, right. but I'm not. I'm, but right. you just did. I know. I'm sorry. You found a way to do I'm it. I'm a dad. I, I make dad. Jokes. That's a, sure yeah. That's probably. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so he comes from a similar background then in terms of the kind of work that he's done. Yep. And actually, um, he was my residency director. So there's a little bit of complicated history there. Uh-huh. Um, but he is extremely skilled in what he does um, and yeah I learned a lot from him and I was very fortunate to kind of come through a time and um, where I had a lot of really good teachers um, which is I think part of my success and the patients mm-hmm. that have followed me is because I I am very good at what I do because of the experience I've had yeah. in the past yeah um, so you know again he's he's a practitioner as well um, and he was the COO and then CEO of um, the company that we worked for. Um, so a lot of experience um, on both sides of um, practice and business mm. management. Yeah. Well. So he, he is, now he's got his own business at this point, right? Yes. So and, he's doing some consulting work. Um, okay. He has got a year left on a non-compete. Okay. Uh, that was another big decision for us was, mm-hmm. um, you know, as we're downsizing and thinking about doing something different because it, it was eating us alive to mm. support a mission that we didn't believe in. Mm. Um, so and we you know, made the decision of, you know, do, um, he's a little older than me, so in 40s, do I have this huge career change and step back and take some time to reassess what we do, or do I stay in this kind of comfort bubble of what I know and a steady paycheck? Um, so we both quit relatively at the same time and did something different which was a huge leap. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But so what is your experience of self-employment versus working for the big corporation? What's good about it and what's not so good about it? Um, yeah, I mean, the the work hours never end, obviously. I mean, any right. entrepreneur will tell you that. Um, but I can say... Well, you do get to sleep like six hours a night. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Until you, you wake up at two thinking about everything you yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, it, and so, but that was the, the thing to me was I have the same work, work ethic and really the same drive, regardless of whether I'm working for somebody or for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of what I'm doing, I was doing anyways. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of ideas, so I was coming up with ideas and, and changing the way that we did things, um, mm-hmm. regardless of where I worked. Um, so it's it's been. It's a little easier to make those changes yes, though in your own yeah, business, isn't the it? Control to do that has been a game changer. Um, mm-hmm. I was telling Kyle last night too that you know I, as tired as I am and as many hours as I'm working, I'm not burned out. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I'm working harder than I was, but because I'm passionate about what I'm doing and I feel like it's you know, building right something, goal, it's not burning me out like it used to. Plus I also always call it the escape factor, right? <laughs> because you have the freedom to bounce. Yeah. I think mentally knowing that you can make yep. that decision is a huge, huge deal. You know, whereas if you're employed, you're feel like you're trapped. <laughs> At least that's how I felt. 
I think a lot of business owners feel trapped too yeah. because they've got oh, yeah. commitments yeah. and right? like this is, leases this is and he, there's nobody to turn your notice into. <laughs> True. You know, but, but I hear what you're saying. Um, so would you, it, it, I'm just curious because I know I remember when I left corporate America and went into my first quote real business, mm -hmm. I was surprised by how much time I had mm. to work on my business because of all the other stuff that sort of comes along with working in corporate America, like yeah. pointless meetings mm -hmm. and providing information to other people that didn't <laughs> benefit you and, sure. you know, yeah. and you just cut all that out of it right. recaps and yeah, forecasts exactly <laughs> just expense like, reports you just cut yeah. all that out yeah. and then yeah. suddenly it's like holy cow i can actually do what i'm supposed to do i was surprised at was did you find partly that but also you know at, there were a lot of things that you're told and i, I think to kind of keep you from really considering opening your own practice mm -hmm. um, you know you hear about how hard it is and you don't want right. to take this risk and you know i mean it's yeah. all these things and how expensive it is and there's no money in this and yeah you get on the outside and it's like you know really if you keep it lean and you make smart decisions this is not that hard mm -hmm. and you ask for help in the areas that you don't know how to do there you go that's big that's a I big mean, point that is a really a good point <laughs> yeah. well but i think that, that i mean like that's that's a huge statement. Like, if you're not an accountant, don't be the accountant. Right. Exactly. Russ, yeah. or an attorney, or I, whatever. As some people just want to try to do everything themselves yeah. because you think, I can't afford not to. Yeah. But you can't afford to do it yourself, and you yeah. can't afford to make the stakes. So, to do it. how many people do you have working for you now? Sure. Right now, I have five. Okay. Bringing on a sixth here in the next couple of weeks. And, and so, like, are these people what are, what do they do are they sure. all practitioners or yeah, so i have um, any support people sure i have someone that is doing billing and insurance um and okay. she is actually kind of a dual role um she has a certificate in um fitter and pedorthos so she's able to do certain level of bracing i see um and then i have an assistant who is able to do um most of the treatment care and it's just not developing the treatment plan so she's fairly independent um, and then I have an admin and a peer advocate as well. So somebody answering the phones, making sure people are taken care of um, on the schedule, um, requesting all the documentation from the doctors. Um, and my peer advocate does some of that for this area, but also just visiting with patients um, during the hospital visits and those kind of. Did, when you when you opened the business, how many folks did you have at that time of opening? Two. And so you just kind of she slowly add up on overhead now. Yeah, yeah she's yes. doing right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that's been, uh -huh. you know, something that I've seen and has, has been really flattering and very just cool to see is the people that have approached me um, because we have focused on culture and, and building yeah. something. And our I think our passion and our mission is so visible yeah. that the really just the cream of the crop has approached me. Yeah. Um, and I really, really believe in that. I, I, totally. You know, Absolutely. you've got a real mission and you make sure you live that. That's right. People respond to that. The workers respond mm -hmm. to that Absolutely. because they want it. Absolutely. So, so um, now what are your plans at this point? Where do you go from here? <laughs> I mean, there's a, obviously a limit as to how many people need the services and products that your business provides. But this is, I think everybody asked me that because they're like, well, how big are we looking at going yeah. and you know what's your vision and uh -huh. I, I don't want to be a, a big conglomerate yeah you know, I, I plan on growing to three or four clinics um and really stopping there you know i don't want okay. this to be so big that it's i can't control it um and it, it, i really want it to be a small family business um you know I, that would mean taking care of 10 15 employees mm -hmm. um and just keeping things lean and in the business I have an idea. What's that? Because I can I can understand what you're saying is you get bigger, you open up more offices, you have more overhead, and then it starts turning into what it's you hard got out of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I create that, I, I think, to a certain extent. For sure. sure. But I think the cool thing is, is in today's time, there's a hybrid approach that can allow you to actually extend your mission mm -hmm. digitally in a way of how you help folks, right? You can scale the 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 uh, pre-consult you can scale the post-consult you can mm -hmm. you can really help 
develop Edu- videos, education. Yeah, man, videos. absolutely, and and be able to yeah to to monetize those courses and those classes, those peer groups. I mean, you gotta kind of consider that, and then you have your clinics as your foundation, but then you can kind of go worldwide with your mission to continue <laughs> to help people. <laughs> He's That'd got you cool. going worldwide, yeah. Sig. Worldwide. You can see how Eric thinks. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you can scale that out. That's and, entrepreneurship. And, uh, I mean, I mean, I just keep going back because, I mean, people need, like, this yeah. stuff, right? Obviously. And you're championing a, uh, you know, a market that that is actually really, really big. Mm-hmm. But to your point, I mean, like, you're scaling that to go worldwide with physical locations is a massive that's Indeed, a massive <laughs> undertaking, right? Yeah, and keeping that culture that you you've started, right? right? Because, I mean, um, just an idea for you. How do you, uh, Eric's got some good thought process? <laughs> how Thanks, do you, um, how do you deal with the personal life and kids? How many kids do you guys have? Three. Okay. Yep. And how old are they? Ten, eight, and three. Wow. Okay. So. How do you manage all that with having this business? Right. That was kind of a side blessing of Kyle stepping out of his position. Mm-hmm. And, and and honestly, a little bit of the non-compete ended up being a blessing as well because he's really stepped up um, at home and done a lot of, the, you know, the pick up and drop off from yeah. school and the school activities and, right. um, you know, cooking dinner. I think he's cooked dinner more times since I <laughs> quit than, you know, in the last, you know. Is he years. a decent cook? He is. Yeah. That's good. That's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> He's a competent guy. He can do yeah. a lot of he different is things. So meticulous. And yeah. It's true He's on very everything competent. that he does, but mm-hmm. he'll follow the recipe to the T and I'm the, like, well, let's yeah, see take your shortcuts. <laughs> yeah. We'll replace it with that kind of thing. And, um, but you know, funny. I mean, I think that's been uh-huh. an interesting dynamic shift. Um, mm. because he is, is very driven. You know, he climbed the ladder. He right. really mm. had a set path and we sure. had meet as a family and say, this is how we make this happen. And, you know, this is what your new role looks like. Um, and just taking it with strides and and supportive as can be. That's awesome. What's, what's uh, so real quick, like whenever you're consulting um, uh, with your clients, is there any kind of innovation that when you go back, like I'm just kind of picturing like in your customizing for that, certain person's lifestyle have you ran into like any innovative solutions that you're like that just aren't on the market but you're like customize this and you really like i can imagine that in yeah, like what's cycle. new yeah like, what yeah, are you like, pushing <laughs> forward yeah there are a lot of um innovations in kind of the socket technology so the interface because if you think about you know you can have the best knee in the foot the out there but if you have discomfort in your socket if it hurts every time you take a step mm. it's not going to do you any good right um so a lot of the innovation out there is focused around socket fit um so there's some different ways to you know hold these things on different suspensions and hmm. volume management um because that's the other big challenge in prosthetics is you have a static shape um, that your limb goes in right and it doesn't change with you um so if you you know have more water one day than the next and you, uh, you know fluctuate mm-hmm. or you lose 10 pounds these things don't fit anymore um, and yeah. then they're again very expensive right so we're yeah. trying to make them fit and last as long as possible um so there's been some changes and in innovations on how to change the socket and keep it a little more dynamic um and that's that's been where i've had the most interest in, in focusing so you're like always looking for new suppliers and new innovations that are out there in the world. You're researching that and then test those things out and mm-hmm. just kind of keep modifying. Yeah. And there's a oh, lot more really cool. technology out there than what we're able to use um, because it's limited by insurance coverage, right? Wow. There yeah. Well, robotic like, arms and yeah, things. Yeah. What so about there's, that? There's sensors that you can, that'll actually mm-hmm. transmit uh, sensations so you can have I've like pressure seen this. And temperature yes sensations. recently on um you know just stumbled across mm-hmm. videos or news items and on it's that a long ways from being <coughs> you know available <laughs> widely available because mm-hmm. of insurance coverage. so the insurance kind of blocks the innovation mm-hmm. for sure what about like medicare medicaid and all that i mean are, do you participate any with that? Yes, yeah, and okay. that's the majority of our patients. Okay, um, because they're on disability, right? Got gotcha. you. So there is a good chunk of private insurance, but a lot of what we do is Medicare and Medicaid. Um, Medicare actually has pretty good coverage. You can hmm. get most of the technology out there, 
Uh, Medicaid is fairly limiting. Um, but, you know, we, we try to find ways to get people what they need, um, whether it's vocational rehab um, and different grants. Um, that's, I think, something that we do well is try to find people hmm. resources on, on getting what they need. So you're, are you saying uh, that the private insurance is blocking more than? Depends on the insurance. Some of them are really good <laughs> and some of yeah. them are, are not. Uh, yeah, you know, I've had yeah, conversations with case management of, you know, they're telling me, why does this person need a leg? <laughs> well, have you tried to hop to the bathroom recently? Right. Now do it for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Not kidding. Right. That's, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we always call it fighting the good fight and really have to go to head with insurance. On. Are there any good innovative insurance companies that are, that have foresight and that can like, that are trying to just bring that wheel along for innovation i feel like blue cross in arkansas has been one of the better ones really mm -hmm. yeah, that's Any good to know good. listening yeah. out there don't get united health care <laughs> uh, that's what i think i have i mean u of a it's umr is that um umr's all right okay <laughs> you well, provides my insurance sure that <laughs> our listeners are going to appreciate yeah, that advice yeah. <laughs> what about people who just don't have any insurance coverage is there mm -hmm. financing available to them? So, you know, we what? definitely do, you know, cash price greatly reduced. Um, mm -hmm. that, at that point, it becomes like a percentage over our cost and you're kind of just doing the work for free. Um, you're just trying to help the patient. Yes. You're not making anything on it. And a lot of times, line. depending on their situation, they can qualify and we help them kind of through the process um, I see. for aid. But, you know, again, there's kind of a rehab and some different resources out there. There's a few mm -hmm. grants um, and some nonprofits like Steps of Faith, um, mm. and I think Wiggle My Toes is another one. Mm. Wow. So, you know, it, kind of staying in the know of, of what's out there can really help a lot of people. Are those local organizations? No, those are national. national. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, what else is in your future? Let's say we mm -hmm. build this up to four clinics and you are got it where you want it, then what happens? Yeah, something I'd want to expand into would be destination care. Uh, okay. So, you know, we we actually live over by Kohler, and when we go on walks, I see people come, and it's amazing how many amputees I've ran into. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, maybe people come in, and we fit them with the bike-specific prostheses. They go ride at Kohler, test this thing out, and get them fit and send them, you know, back to their, their real world. Um, and that's, I think, a different model of care. Um, Put them up in a, in a right. um, yeah, and just make it all vacation housing. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that would be really interesting. Well, so you're talking about like people come from out of town and they yeah. stay at a certain yeah. place and yeah. and get this because treatment. you have a design that mm -hmm. place to fit their needs. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. that and would then, be very yeah, cool. I've, with having the different clinics, I could do you know, mountain biking here. I could do fly fishing yeah. in, in Mountain Home because that's a big fly fishing sure. capital. You could do hiking prosthetics or, you know, kayaking or whatever. But it's maybe a whole, like, outdoor Eric, adventure. Eric's <laughs> got an outdoor adventure company. <laughs> well, I mean, it's on, it's, yeah. it's, it's not really ramping up right now. <laughs> okay. Well, you've only got about 10 things. Well, yeah, you're but I mean, like, this is it, actually. Get out. Get out. Yeah. yeah. But. It's 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 a little bit of ways from actualizing. There's a lot of risk in that. I wonder though if there'd be a way to integrate that with what Terrence. Oh yeah, doing. totally. Yeah, you know, like you could have a special event and you could handle part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys sure. should talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we should. Yeah, because I know that's on your agenda for it stuff is. you want to do. Yeah, that along with building that castle on the hill that you're building over there with the driveway <laughs> that's in the wrong place. I'm just trying to get a driveway done. <laughs> yeah, you know. Castle will come later, but the big thing is this this studio, right? You can expand yeah. that. That's that's coming up next week. So next time you come in, you know we'll be in a little bit more of a upgraded. Studio oh, it's going to be fantastic! It is. I'm really excited. Yeah. So back <laughs> though, uh, you guys also own some commercial real estate, don't you? Yes. Mm. Well, yeah, but your business is not located in your own building. Why is that? No, um, in part it was. I wanted to serve the Bentonville Bella Vista area. I see. So yeah. you went north of your uh huh. Um, one, there's not a provider in this area, um, so a lot of people are having to travel. And if you think about people with amputations, they really don't want to drive through an hour of traffic. Uh, sure. Most of them are having to coordinate somebody else driving them as well. 
Um, so it's somewhat convenience of care, mm -hmm. too. It puts me, again, closer to some of the outdoor activities yeah. that I want to tie into in the future. Yeah, so your location is kind of tied a little bit. I mean, there's trails galore. Right. Yep. Got it. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Well, it sounds exciting, and um, you're doing a great job, obviously, to be where you are now. When did you start this business? <laughs> I signed a lease um, in July. So we are of 2023. Yeah. Wow. This is a new thing. You know, we only got five people over there. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's great. impressive. Yeah. It's been a little bit chaotic, but it's been good. <laughs> it's a fun little roller coaster. Oh. Had to build all that out. What advice do you have for people who are thinking about starting their own business? Maybe they're like you, where they have some kind of a particular professional skill. What do you say to them? What advice would you have? Um, that it's, definitely a scary move but well worth it and just take the plunge um, assess your finances so that you aren't stressed about mm. you know paying the the rent but mm -hmm. um just go for it it's cool yeah I, i'm with you gotta do it <laughs> yep i could i could make a crude statement but I, i'll refrain but and i would add on to what you're do doing it. like the purpose mission driven right reason behind the business is so critical and that's something that i just don't think is missing and you can't put that in a spreadsheet because you're gonna have to power through a lot of risky decisions mm -hmm. but believing in your mission and your purpose will will get you across it gets you through yeah yeah and the bad times then yeah, yeah. inevitably we all hit right. yeah and believing a, in something man yeah. like yeah. freaking braveheart i mean it's a tough balance yeah. of listening to feedback and getting all the feedback and yeah. you know somebody's going to tell you no this is a bad idea mm. and you have to know that and listen but also believe in what you're doing and pursue yeah and they try to sway you away from your your target right. demographic right. that you've been going after and they don't may not even understand that mm -hmm. They'll be like, well, what you really need to do is turn the tables. Like you need to, like, you need to have forty patients. Pivot, <laughs> pivot, the big word of the day. That's right. You've got to pivot. So, <laughs> would you say that things pretty well worked out according to your plan, or were there any major departures? No, I think you know it's it's been going pretty smooth. I don't feel like I've had to give up or change or pivot anywhere too majorly. <laughs> See, I love hearing that because yeah. a lot of people say, well, the business plan doesn't mean anything. You're going to throw it all away the day you start your mm -hmm. business. I never did that. Yeah. I I felt like the business, basic business plan still viable 35 years later. Mm. The time frame, you know, I think it has been changed quite a bit. It's It was accelerated and, you know, uh -huh. and mm. like we talked about, I've brought on five people and it's like, I guess I will pay myself next month. You know, you kind of just keep kicking sure, the kid yep. down the road of how long can I not collect a paycheck? Oh, we've all been thing. there, baby. Yeah. That's, so we can bring on the next yeah. team member because it's, it's more important to have the right team and bring this yep. person on. It's an right. investment yep. mode. And it, for you to it, stay it, focused on what your strength is or get to where you're trying to get to, yeah. right? It's better to, yeah. to postpone getting financial reward yeah. to get focused. Yep. Too many businesses, I think the owners try to extract too much too early, and yep. they basically kill the business. They're sucking yep. all the working capital out of it. Right. Yep. How do you market this business? We grow a lot by word of mouth. Um, some of it's referral-based, too, and that is... From doctors? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, surgeons, um, some primary right. care as well. But it's it, And it varies so much based on area. Um, the, the small towns that we're in... Is, is very much you can get in front of the physicians. They're down to earth. You have a conversation with them, what you're trying to do and why. Um, I'll, I will say Northwest Arkansas has been very much more political than mm -hmm. anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really hard to get in front of surgeons and say, hey, we, we offer something better um, and getting them to listen and why they should send them to you. Mm -hmm. um, so Northwest Arkansas has been a lot more word of mouth than I think you know, just proving to people that we can do a better job. Um, so most of my patients up here have been people that, honestly, that some of them haven't walked comfortably in six years, and they come and they find me, and I'm like, let's give it one more try. Let me try. Um, and it, it takes a little bit of risk and hope for them to say, maybe I can hope that this doesn't hurt to walk. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, but when you get them up and going and they're comfortable, they won't never leave you. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, we really appreciate your being here with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Awesome business. <laughs> yeah. Well 
Yeah. All right. Well, this has been another episode of Big Talk, Talk About, about Small business. business. Check out our website at www.bigtalkaboutsmallbusiness.com. We're on all the major streaming platforms, YouTube. Spread the word. Sign up. We have a subscribe uh, option on our mm-hmm. site. Don't forget to ask questions. We love Submit your questions. questions. Yeah. We Get ideas. We we recommendations love, of guests absolutely love Re- it. bring it and and um, sponsors if, yeah. if anybody wants to sponsor the show yeah um, whoever wants to reach out to an audience of small business owners mm-hmm. who are smart and trying to run their business more effectively yep in their lives contact us <laughs> <laughs> well done Mark thanks buddy take care thank you Terry thanks Taryn. Thank Thanks for tuning into this episode of Big Talk About Small Business. If you have any questions or ideas for upcoming shows, be sure to head over to our website, www.bigtalkaboutsmallbusiness.com, and click on the Ask the Host button for the chance to have your questions answered on the show. Stay connected with us on LinkedIn at Big Talk About Small Business. And be sure to head over to our website to read articles, browse episodes, and ask questions about upcoming shows. 